Welcome to Trailblazers Impact Podcast with inspiring stories of women. I'm Nan McKay, and Dee Dee Strum, my co-host, and I interview ordinary women who have lived extraordinary lives. The women we interview share their inspirational secrets and provide hope and guidance to women of all ages in similar circumstances. Trailblazers Impact chronicles struggles, successes, and the impact of lessons learned from seasoned professionals who have blazed a trail for others to follow. Trailblazers Impact Podcast is featured in the Top 20 Trailblazers Trendsetters Podcasts by Feedspot and as one of the Top 28 Podcasts for Women in Their 20s by Pretty Progressive. Our website is trailblazersimpact.com, and you can contact us at hello at trailblazersimpact.com. Please follow us on our website and read our blogs while we share the stories. I would like to introduce you today to Terry Ijioma. Now, Terry is going to give us the secret, her own secret to using the stock market to travel. So let's start out a little bit earlier than that. And tell me, Terry, how did your early life affect who you are today? Thank you so much for having me. This is such a great opportunity, and I just appreciate you so much. Um, One thing I would say is my interest in the stock market actually started in high school. And I remember that Google had their IPO my senior year in high school. And I went to my grandmother and I was like, Granny, oh my gosh, we've got to invest in this um, Google thing there. It's the internet and it's going to be the best thing ever. We've got to invest. And I remember her telling me, well, what? Okay, first of all, she's like, well, I don't know if we have the money for all that, but how do you do it? And neither one of us knew. So I remember going and asking my teachers, my professors, I asked everybody, how do we get into Google? How do we be a part of this IPO? And nobody knew. So if you can just think, like back then, it was $83 a share. And my grandmother and I, we looked, we didn't know how to get into it. So we just let it, let it fall away. But if we had gotten in, Google is now over $1,200 a share. Even if we had gotten like 10 of those, it would have changed my life. And so that experience, just knowing that I was trying to invest and I didn't know how to do it, is the problem that I'm solving for now. A lot of people are interested. They've heard about making their money work for them. They've heard about this stock market thing, but they just don't know where to start. They don't know how to open an account. They don't know how to actually place a trade. They don't know how to protect themselves. And if they do try it, it's usually something like, oh, I heard about this Robin Hood app, or I heard about such and such, and I'm just going to um, just put some shares in, but they don't know what they're doing. So now, all the work I'm doing today with helping people to invest in the stock market is solving for that problem. Like, how do you actually start? And then when you're doing it, how do you do it well so that you can make the money work for you? So what is your secret? (laughs) Um, I think there. I actually have four secrets. Honestly, I have four secrets. And they all, all start a little bit with a myth. So there's a myth that you have to have a lot of money to start trading, but you don't actually. Like one secret is that there's a thing called a margin account where if you put your cash in, they'll let you trade with four times the cash in your account. Most people don't know that. So we're thinking, for example, if we have to start, if we have to invest $100,000, most normal people were like, well, we need to save up $100,000 to actually invest that much money. But in a margin account, you actually only need $25,000, and then you can use a buying power of $100,000. So like that's one secret, being able to use the bank's money to actually trade. I know that sounds really risky, and that's the second secret. Then you got to protect yourself from losing money. And so there's all of these risk management steps that you can take, like putting in stop loss orders. And I know this might be more than you're wanting to hear, but like these are the secrets (laughs) that nobody tells us. But there's a way to actually protect yourself from losing. So um, there's an order type where if the, the trade is going against you, it'll actually 
get you out of the trade. So say you're, you are in a trade and you said, I don't want to lose more than $100 on this. You can put that stop loss at $100. And if the stock goes against you, it'll take you out. So you only lose $100. Most people don't know about that. So on bad days when there's a crazy tweet or the economy is going crazy, all they know is that they're their account is going down and they don't know how to get out. But if you know about stop losses and risk management, you can protect yourself from losing. And then the third sacred is around looking at charts. If you know how to read a chart, you can actually see where the big banks like, where's Goldman Sachs? Where's Morgan Stanley buying a million shares of this company? What price are they buying and what price are they selling? You can figure that out in a chart and actually Watch your, like you can buy when the banks are buying and sell when the banks are selling. And that's how you actually make good money on a consistent basis. So I don't want to bore you, but those are like three secrets of how you actually do it. Well, you're not boring me at all. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Do you, uh, do you just go to the stock market itself to look at this or how, how do you make those trends? I mean, where do you get that data? How do you see that? Sure. So There's definitely more steps. And I have like a whole course where I teach people how to invest and get started. But like the first part is you have to open a brokerage account. And depending on your broker, they'll have other tools like charts and watch lists. And sometimes they'll have news about companies. So a couple tools I will give is you can go to the CNBC app. So the NBC network has their financial sector. I know you probably know, but in case someone on the the podcast doesn't, they also have an app. So it's like the financial network of the NBC channel, but they're on their app. You can build a watch list of all the companies you like, and it'll pop up notifications on your phone when something's happening with the company. They also have charts and they have like all the information about earnings. So that's a good resource. And then once you open your brokerage account, that will also be a resource. So let's talk about this online course you have. First of all, give us the website so we we have it handy. Sure. If anyone's interested, it's itradeandtravel.com. So that's itradeandtravel.com. And and is spelled out. Yes. And then what's the name of your course? Trade and Travel. And that's because when I wanted to quit my job, I wanted to travel the world. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, how do, I, how do I afford to travel? And it was trading stocks. So it's trade and travel. And is there a cost for the online course? Yes, yes. The bigger course is 5000 But if you, want, like, if you can't afford that just yet, you can start with the half of the course for 2000 Okay. Mm-hmm. And then what else do you have on that website that might be helpful for people? Sure. So as soon as they go to iTrade and Travel, Mm -hmm. they can put in their email address. If they put in their email address, it'll send them back a free webinar that I've done on my top four secrets. So they can get more information about those secrets I was telling you about on picking good companies, risk management, and technical analysis. So you say you like to travel. And you're doing this really to get the money to travel. So tell us a little bit about some of your most exciting travels you've ever had and the countries you like best. Tell us about those things. So my favorite country so far is actually Israel. And I did not know. I think when I was reading the Bible, I had this misconception of like this old place with like dirt roads. <laughs> but man, I went to visit Tel Aviv and it was like a mix between Miami and Chicago. Like they have all these beautiful skyscrapers and the water is beautiful. Oh, it was it's just gorgeous and the food was good. So that's been my favorite. But I've been all over. Like I did a month in Thailand, a month in Vietnam, a month in um South Korea, then I've gone to Greece, Italy, like just everywhere. And I've been able to stay there for a good amount of time, which is cool. So when you go to these places, where do you stay? Do you stay in a hotel or do you stay in an Airbnb or how do you do it? So I will say that I love Airbnb. I'm actually like a super host on Airbnb. So I've had some of the coolest places um, through Airbnb. But I usually, like if I'm staying a month, sometimes I'll rent an apartment. And that'll be like my home base for the month. So it really depends what location I go to. So let's say somebody wants to go to Thailand, Phuket, 
or wherever they decide to go. Uh huh. And what would they do to find an apartment in that kind of place? So it really, so, okay, great question. When I was going, I did a program where I would go with like a community of people and we were all people that could work from anywhere. So with that program, I let the people decide, well, not decide, but they like helped us find the housing and a co-working space. So if you look for a program like Remote Year, the one I did was called We Roam, but I don't think they're around anymore. But um, there's some, there's actually quite a few programs where you can travel with a community and still work while you're in that in that city and you have uh, some people around. I highly recommend those companies. But then if you're going by yourself, because I've also done some solo traveling, then I would recommend the Airbnb. Are you racking up your airline miles? Yes. <laughs> I just, so lately I've been traveling a ton, but inside of the U.S. So I've gone from like, like last week I was in D.C. Now I'm in San Diego. Next, uh, next week I'll be in Austin, Texas. So I've been going all over the place and I have been using airline miles, but I'm saving up because I really want to go to South Africa. So that's what I'm saving my big, my big points for, for. I want to get a really nice place and I want to, um, yeah, I just I just want to stay for at least a month and get a really beautiful place overlooking the ocean. Going business class? So, okay, I have to admit, although I now, I guess I'm a millionaire now, but I'm still very cheap. So, <laughs> so no, I'll probably do economy cuz I I'm, I'm a cheap person and want to get a good price on my ticket. <laughs> Secrets, <laughs> but I'm yeah, I'm pretty frugal. Well, my advice to you would be, as having traveled a lot, go business class at least once. Okay. It probably will spoil you. <laughs> True. You're Especially right. Especially those lie flat seats. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that, mm, that does sound good. That sounds really good. You probably have some passions. Tell me what they are and how you've lived them. I love, so um, many people don't know about my story, but I went to MIT for undergrad and that, that gave me kind of an introduction to finance and I interned on Wall Street. So I did get like tons of math and science exposure. But when I went to grad school, I decided that I would go for something I was passionate about. And so I ended up going to seminary because I wanted to learn more about the Bible. And I'd, it, it's my faith. I'd been... Um, in church all of my life, but I wanted to just know more about this Bible I was studying. So definitely my faith is one of my passions, and it's one of the things I'm planning to focus on as an angel investor. I really want to give to ministries and parachurch ministries that are having impact around the world. So that's a passion. And then I love movies. I love um, photography. So I love videography and media, but those are some of my passions. You might want to listen to one of our podcasts. Her name is Lynn Burton, and she is a female ordained minister. Nice. And see what she has to say about it as well. I'm going to write that down. Another question. Uh, what do you feel, and, and describe this for me, a, a really important contribution that you made was like, what, what have you done that you feel is really important? More recently, I really do think that this class is a contribution to my online course. One of the, like one of the stories I think of is one of my students, her name is Annette. Um, her sister passed away and she inherited her two nephews. So when she first came into my class, it was a thing of, Terry, all of a sudden I have these additional kids. How am I going to afford to take care of them? And we, I started teaching her how to invest her money. She had some money in her retirement and some savings. And so I started teaching her how to invest her money. And it went from, you know, how do I take care of these kids to one day she sent me a text message and she's like, Oh my God, Terry, I just made $2,600 in a day. Like, Oh my God. Like she, she couldn't believe it. And she had been a real estate investor in the past. And so she was telling me like, Terry, when, when you do real estate, you get paid only once a month, like you get the rent and then that's it. But with this, I just made $2,000 or $2,600 in a day. Like this is going to change the life of me and my kids. Kids. So I think just 
pushing through to create the course and put it out there so people can be better investors is like a huge contribution that I've been able to give people. Maybe it's a little bit like being the winds wind beneath their wings. Yeah. Letting them fly into an area that they never thought they would fly into. I think so. And I think a lot of times when people think of their money, they have all of this fear around it and they don't feel like they're in control. So when I give them my trading plan and I teach them how to open their accounts, how to protect their risk, like that all of a sudden allows them to take control back. And they feel like, Terry, you know, I'm not afraid. I know that I can do this and I have options now. If my job, if I if I don't if I don't want to go to work tomorrow, I don't have to because I have another way to make money or, you know, if something comes up like an emergency, I have a way to raise those funds. Like all of a sudden they have control and options that they didn't have before. That's great. Have you ever said to yourself, I just don't I really don't think I can do this? Oh, man. So, <laughs> so like, the the best day and the worst day of my life were on the same day. It, it was crazy. Um, I was in Thailand, and I, I remember this like it was yesterday because it was such a crazy day. So, in Thailand, they have this festival of lanterns. And so, the whole – and I was in Chiang Mai when this happened. So, uh, the whole city comes together. Have you been there? Yes. Have you been there for that festival? I did not go for the festival, but I have been in Chiang Mai. Yes. So it's so cute. I love that city. Um, But the whole city came together and they're all lighting these lanterns and you're supposed to like let them go and make a wish. So like I'm with this group and everybody in the city's there. We're all making wishes. And I like let mine go about how I want to have so much prosperity this year and um, just the most beautiful experience and you you see all these lanterns floating away and it's almost like stars it's it's just so beautiful so we have this beautiful experience and then I go to work work being I go to trade because in uh, with a time difference the U.S. market opens at like I think it, it was something like midnight or something late um so after we had this beautiful experience which I would say is one of the best days of my life I went to open up my portfolio and I had just lost a ton of money like it was like twenty thousand dollars and I was like oh my gosh so I I panic so now I'm calling my mom and I'm like mommy I can't do this I'm not gonna trade anymore I quit I'm not (laughs) so I'm just I'm bawling and I'm just like I quit Uh, Like I have already like resolved in my mind that I'm about to go get another job and I'm going to go lay on the beach in Thailand for about two more weeks till my money runs out. And then I'm going to go home and get a job because I can't trade anymore. Like I'm just thinking I'm such a big failure. And my mom says to me, she's like, well, Terry, how are you going to get your money back if you quit now? And I was like, what? Mommy, you're supposed to say, yes, go quit. Go get a job. (laughs) Like, how are you so smart right now? (laughs) So I, I, like, as soon as she said that, I just froze. And I, I went ahead and started trading again. And it was hard because I had lost so much. And I had, and when you lose money, I think one of the biggest things about tr- trading stocks is that it's also a mental thing. So part of it is just mastering your emotions. And at this point, I had lost confidence a bit in myself as a person. Like, how could I be so stupid? Then you start thinking through all the different things. Well, what if I just hadn't placed this trade yesterday? Or, oh, how did I invest in so many shares? But of course, the day before, I was thinking I was the most brilliant person. I was going to be so rich because it was it was earnings for a company that I really liked. And so I was thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to be so rich tomorrow. No, it just did not (laughs) not work that way. Um, So that was the day where I felt like I just can't do this anymore. But once my mom challenged me, I decided, okay, I'm going to get the money back and I'm going to to go back to my original plan. Like I'm going to 
go back to the trading plan and the discipline that I had before. And that was small wins, not trying to break the bank in one one trade. But okay, we're going to go back to consistent small wins that I was doing when I left my job, I needed $300 a day, small, consistent wins. So I started doing that and eventually uh, brought my account back up and got to the point where I was making $1,000 a day. And it was all because I went back to my discipline. Yeah. It's sort of that, I think it's part of the song, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. Is that kind of where you were? Oh, yes. I was definitely there. But I think it was one of those things, too, where you got to encourage yourself because when you're in a place where you feel like, dang, I I just failed. Like this, what? And then on top of that, I was teaching. I, I, had, I wasn't teaching a lot of students at that time because we hadn't really gotten into it. But other people were looking up to me. And so now I was like, man, how could I lose money? I'm the teacher. I'm supposed to be the expert. This isn't good. But, yeah, it's when you have to encourage yourself. And like you said, dust yourself off pick yourself back up again. If you could go back in time, what would you tell your younger self? I would tell myself to be courageous and be persistent. Um, there's a lot of things in my life where I, oh, maybe, maybe even have faith. Um, There's a lot of times in my life where I've had to step out on faith and I didn't really know what the next step was going to look like. So um, even quitting my job and starting to trade full time, nobody does that. Like I can't look around and say, oh, yeah, Billy Bob did that. And no one in my family even considered quitting their job, a good job at that with benefits. You don't quit your job and then you don't trade stocks like that's just not that's not. That's not it. So sometimes you just have to be courageous, go against the grain, have faith that it's going to work out, and then be persistent. Like, keep working at it until it works. But I think there's also some things that you've had in your background that would add to that. Because we we don't want to say, all right, anybody, just quit your job and jump into day trading. Because you've had your education you had some experience on Wall Street. Mm-hmm. You had you started small and built it up before you left your job, right? Yes. So those are the things. I mean, there's some background that you that you had that other people maybe don't have. That's true. I definitely would say if someone's interested in starting to trade stocks full time or even as a part time thing to supplement their income, they definitely need to take a class. So I would encourage my course, my online course or some type of course where they can learn how to do it correctly. And then I encourage them to get a good mentor. Find someone who's been successful at trading and who you feel like you could learn from and then follow that person because there's tons of strategies out there on how to trade stocks, but you just have to find a teacher that you feel like you can learn from and then work with them in, in becoming a good trader. And I think you have to have an aptitude for it and maybe a little bit of math background. You said you had math. I did. I did. But you know, the way that I teach it actually doesn't have to do with a lot with math. It's more about negotiation. So I think about it like when I'm in Nigeria and I go to a market and we're like the cloth market, I'm the buyer and I'm trying to buy it low and then the seller is trying to sell it high. But I never pay full price. The thing is in the negotiation, you're haggling to get the right price. And that's like markets across the world. The stock market is a market just like that. Like it originally originated as a market selling stock and you have the buyers and sellers negotiating. So if you can negotiate and like really be able to find good deals that's like and I mean deals like you know how to go to the store and find your nice shirt on clearance sale type of deal (laughs) then then you actually would be good at learning how to invest in stocks and putting that stop loss in so that you also know that you're not going to go deep over the edge you can protect yourself you can protect yourself a little bit which is really good advice what what motivates you what keeps you going 
I actually have so much fun when I hear my students being successful. So like we have a Facebook group and they've been putting in their wins. They put in screenshots of like the money they're making. And like it's everything from uh, like a $2,000 account just made $200. 10% returns. Like what? Um, to bigger accounts making like they are killing it. And I think when I see their success and know the impact it can have, that keeps me motivated. What role do you think your grandmother and your mother had to play on who you are today and your success today? I think both of them showed me what it's like to grind and hustle to provide for your family. So my grandmother, she was a bus driver for 30 years, but she just, she was consistent and she worked hard just to feed her family. My mom, she is the kindest heart that I have ever seen, but she's always worked in nonprofits and things that don't pay you very much because she just has a really servant heart, but she did everything she could to just take care of me. So I think the biggest thing I've learned from them is how to have um, just perseverance and hustle and how to keep working and keep going to take care of the people you love. With all your travel, you've probably faced discrimination in one place or another. Mm -hmm. How would you advise people that ha are facing that today? I definitely think that it's good to stay calm and speak up. So, um, like when I, this actually wasn't with travel, but it was actually at MIT. I remember this time where they had like a diversity and inclusion day. I guess it was the new thing that was supposed to happen. <laughs> and so we all went into these rooms and we had this conversation. So I remember I'm the only black person. There's other women there, but I'm the only black person. And we're, I'm in a big circle of people. There's got to be at least... 30 people in this circle and they go around and they say something like, well, you know, what's your experience with black people? Something crazy. And I remember every person, I was the last one to go. And I remember every person in there saying, oh, well, I grew up in the suburbs, so I didn't interact with black people. And they just went around. Yeah, I grew up in the suburbs, too. So I didn't interact with black people. And when it got to me, I was like, I grew up in the suburbs, too, and I'm a black person. <laughs> um, no, but what I did is instead of getting, like, really upset, like, man, that's a big stereotype that black people don't live in the suburbs. And the only way you can interact with black people is if you're in the inner city. And just, like, all the assumptions that they had made, and they weren't trying to be negative. That's just all they knew. Um so first, like in that situation, I kept calm. I could have like s snapped and got all upset, but I decided instead I'm going to just educate. And so I told them. So now this is me, freshman in college, speaking to this big room of people, telling them like, hey, you're going to meet some really cool people of color and some really cool black people here at the school. And most of them have probably also grown up in the suburbs. So... <laughs> So um, don't just don't make assumptions that like the people that you're around are not cool. Get to know them so that you know more about them instead of making assumptions. And and I think, though, that them hearing that from me in a calm way, but also me speaking my truth um, was helpful because now they could actually operate and see see that there's a different way to operate. Well, I'm going to ask you for one more piece of advice. And my last question is, if there's a life lesson to pass along to younger people, for you, what would it be? Mm, good question. I think it would be, do it afraid. So when I speak, I still get very afraid, but I do it anyway. When I trade, it can sometimes be scary, like I'm making a trade when the stock market, when the stock is coming down uh, and it looks like everything is wrong, that's when I'm trying to get in because it's at a really great price. So, of course, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going against the grain, but I'm going to do it anyway and do it afraid with, um, yeah, with quitting my job. Like all the parts of my story, I feel like the underlying current is I was afraid, but I did it anyway. And so that's what I would tell young people 
it's going to be tough and you're going to probably be afraid, but just do it anyway. And if they fail. Hey, what's there to lose? You're just back to where you were in the first place. Exactly. (laughs) Yep. I always say, so go ahead and tell me no. It's just right where I was anyway. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed listening to another story of the impact of Trailblazers. Visit our website at trailblazersimpact.com and connect with us at hello at trailblazersimpact.com. And remember, you must learn a new way to think before you can master a new way to be.